Although we may hope that we know everyone on our crisis management team, the reality is that by the nature of our work, we'll often have to work with strangers. And so we need to figure out how to organize a team of strangers. The complex adaptive system in which we work can appear like a state of chaos. We don't always have the opportunity to choose our team. In fact, during a crisis, staffing makes stable team compositions rare. It has been said that an expert team is not the same as a team of experts. The inconvenient truth is that in a crisis where people are comfortable being themselves, there are often multiple leaders. In fact, we want to challenge the conventional wisdom that focuses on leaders and followers and shift our frame to leaders and leaders. We believe that this shift change empowers every member of the team to speak up and prevent situations where classic followers wait for formal leaders to assign roles or make a decision. We'd like to replace the historical crisis resource management principle of designating leadership and establishing role clarity with identifying a team coordinator who allocates leadership roles in a team that respects the chain of command. We hope that you see value in the idea that an ideal team is a team of multiple leaders who are adaptable and respect the chain of command to effectively manage a crisis. And recognize that coordination can change and will need to change at a moment's notice, requiring team members to adapt to shifting circumstances. There will be lead nurses and lead specialists who will be a part of this complexity. For example, there may be an airway leader who has several assistants. Leadership allocation is about determining who will lead in each task in a crisis. And warning, it's easy to forget to do this in the fog of war when our cognitive burden is high. If roles aren't clear, the potential of chaos increases. When we walk into a medical crisis, we'll likely not be alone. We will be surrounded by other members of a team, and knowing how to allocate a task may be obvious based on profession. The anesthesiologist can be delegated the task of intubation, and the surgeon can be delegated the task of opening a chest or abdomen. In this case, we're assigning leadership roles based on knowledge, skills, training, and profession. Sometimes these roles are clear, other times they're not. For example, both an anesthesiologist and a surgeon can place a central line. To avoid confusion in a crisis, harness the three C's. Cite names with clear instructions and close the loop. In a crisis, task-focused instructions ensure that task work is completed and that roles are defined. Remember that example of a central line placement that both a surgeon and an anesthesiologist could perform. An effective leader will see that confusion and preempt. For example, Dr. A, please intubate. Dr. B, place the line. The role allocation can also include a cognitive roadmap. Dr. B, wait for Dr. C to intubate before placing the central line, and let me know when you're done. This type of language is direct. It seems obvious that a leader can assign roles, but anyone can also assign him or herself a leading role. We're going to show you two ways to assign roles. Watch this scene from our crisis scenario, where an event coordinator assigns a role. This is an example of explicit coordination, where a task or role is explicitly assigned. OK, everyone, here's where we are. We still need to secure an airway. We have a potential abdominal bleed, and we think it's safer to stay here and stabilize the patient before heading to the OR. Is that everyone's understanding? Can I have the meds, please? Do you still want fentanyl? No. Can you monitor his vital signs? He's probably going to get hypotensive. Can you feel his belly? 
Our plan is to induce with etomidate and succinylcholine, then take a look with the video laryngoscope. If we can't get a good look, we'll mask or LMA. Brian may need to do a trach. How's that plan sound, everybody? I agree. Sats are dropping. Daniel, can you pull out the LMA and have it nearby? Uh, Ernan, can you apply cricoid pressure? Got it. Diane, can you give me any equipment that I may need? Yes. Brian, if we don't get the airway within one minute of induction, can you prep the net for surgical airway? Okay, got it. Now watch this scene where followers become leaders and assign themselves roles. This is an example of implicit coordination, where there's a shared mental model for the task at hand. We're stretched thin today, so let's please go around and just clarify our roles. I'm Dr. Boyd. I'm running the event. Daniel, I'll be documenting and helping with meds. I'm Diane. I'm the bedside nurse. Ernan, resident EM. Guess I'm on airway. As we discussed in section two of this course, the complex adaptive system is chaotic. So in the heat of the moment, how do we organize ourselves and how do we lead in this state of chaos? Renowned researcher Amy Edmondson suggests that the answer lies with the verb teaming. Simply put, leading is about teaming. According to Edmondson, teaming is teamwork on the fly. It involves coordination and collaboration without the benefit of a stable team structure. Because many operations, like the ones in which we work in, in hospitals, requires a level of staffing flexibility that makes stable team composition rare. To team is to organize to learn. Leaders do this by one, asking questions. Two, sharing information. Three, seeking help. Four, experimenting with unproven actions. Five, talking about mistakes. And six, seeking feedback. 